want you to fill this house with your presence. We make a big habitation for you. Come on, just invite him in in your own way. Holy Spirit, we invite you into this house today that you would do what only you can do, that you would do what you desire to do. We declare that we are your children and we want to be touched by you today. So we say, Holy Spirit, move. Holy Spirit, move. Holy Spirit, move. Move in a great way. Move in our lives. Move in our hearts. Move in our families. Move in our communities. Move in our church, oh God. We thank you, Lord, that you are worthy to be praised. And so we bring our praise to you. We bring our praise to you. Come on, bring your praise. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord, for you are good. 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 You are faithful in all your ways. You are good. 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 Oh, you're wonderful, Lord. You're majestic in all your ways. Great is your love towards us. We love you, Lord. Come on. Come on. We just got to praise him for a minute. I don't need a song to praise him. I know what he's done in my life, and I praise him. And I glorify him, and I worship him. You are great, Lord. You are great. You are great. You're worthy. You are worthy of all the praise. You are worthy. house. Come on, church. You are high and lifted up in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you and we worship you. One thing I want about this house is we don't need a song to praise him. Right. We don't need the right song That's to right. worship him. That's praise right. and worship lives on the inside. Amen. And I know that he is faithful, and I know that he is good, and I know that he is holy, and I know that he's always on time. I know he goes before me, and he is behind me. He's beside me. The word says he is our rear guard. He is holy and worthy. Come on, just one more time. Let's say, Lord, you're worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You're holy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. You are worthy to be praised. And so we bring this corporate anointing before the throne room of God. And we say, Heavenly Father, be exalted in this house. Would you say amen with me? I was buried beneath my shame And who could carry that kind of weight You was my tomb to love it and I was breathing but not alive
sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I need a shelter, I was an orphan, now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing, now you're Take me. You're an always on time, God. You never leave me. You never close your ear to me. You're an on time, God. You're always there. Always there. You're always listening, Lord. You hear. Oh, God. 
heart faithful to Jesus. You always hear us, Lord. You always hear. So we lift our praise. We lift our worship. We lift our heart towards you. This is how I fight my battles. This, this is how I fight my battles. I put my praise in This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. I praise you through it, This is how I fight my battles. I praise you through it, Lord. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Just lift your hands to him and thank you for being faithful. Hallelujah. Faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. Holy 
glorious, glorious, I run inside the throne room before you. I bow the veil. The veil is torn. The doors swing wide. I see glorious. I run inside the throne room. Before you. Before you. I bow. I bow. The veil is torn. The veil is torn. The doors swing wide. I see glorious. face right now, Lord God. We worship you, Lord, in spirit and in truth with lifted hands all over this place. Just begin to magnify him. Just begin to open your mouths and speak out the name of Jesus. Oh, we thank you, God. Oh, hallelujah. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. And all my days, I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up, until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. Hallelujah. And all my life, you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am playful, I will sing of the goodness of God. Hallelujah. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. In darkest night, you are close like no other. I know you as a father, I know you as a friend. I have lived in the goodness of God all my life. And all my life, you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing I will sing of the goodness of God All my life And all my life you have been faithful So faithful, God, all my life All my life you have been so Of 
the goodness of God. Your goodness, your goodness is running out. It's running out to me. Your goodness is running out. It's running out to me. Your goodness, your goodness is running out. If you believe it, just say his goodness. Your goodness is running out. It's running out to me. Come on until you believe it's your goodness. Your goodness is running out. It's running out to me. Come on, one sound, your goodness. Your goodness is running out. It's running out to me. Your goodness is running out, it's running out to me. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Oh, Rana Maria Lama, we bless you. No, we're not done blessing him. Come on, let's bless him. Let's magnify him. He is worthy, worthy, worthy. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You are worthy, Lord. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Worthy is the Lord. Worthy is the Lord. Oh, Lord God Almighty. Lord God, your goodness has surrounded us, has favored us, has undergirded us, has crowned us. We have been crowned with tender, loving mercies. Oh, we love you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We magnify you, Lord. Glory and honor to the King of kings and to the Lord of lords. It is our great pleasure, our great honor to gather in your name today, Lord, and magnify you. With every beat of our heart, every breath of our lungs, we just want to declare the goodness of God in our lives. You are so good. 
You are so worthy of all our praise, all of our honor. We lay our lives down before you yet again in devotion to your Lordship. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for the impartation of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the Word of God that is a light and a lamp unto our path. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the purpose that you have sown into our life. Thank you for the meaning that you give us. Thank you for making it all worthwhile. Thank you for giving us strength in our weaknesses. Thank you for giving us grace in the midst of the battle. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for writing our names in the Lamb's Book of Life. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, you give us a precious promise that says, If any two on earth agree, as touching anything that they should ask, it shall be done for them of our Father who is in heaven. We come into agreement with your word today, and we declare peace on earth, goodwill towards men. We pray peace on this earth, peace among all men, peace that passes all understanding, divine, supernatural, God-inspired peace that flows from the throne room of heaven, the love of God, the peace of God, the joy of the Lord. The grace of the Most High, may it flood this land, wash over this land. May there be brotherly love like we have never seen before. And may the winds of revival of your love, of your kindness, of your ways, wash over this land. Winds of revival blow, fire on the altar fall, rivers of living water flow in this nation. We thank you, Lord, for brotherly love, brotherly kindness, understanding, mutual respect. We thank you, Lord, for it. Love, 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 love in this land. Love in this land. Sacrificial love, laying down our lives for one another, esteeming the other higher great than ourselves. The love of God. The love of God. And we thank you for it, Lord. Now, Lord, as pastor of Grandview Church, I pray with the other pastors and the fellowship of this body for all of our loved ones that need God's touch of healing in their body. Everybody that is on our prayer list, everybody that we're mindful of right now, everybody that is part of our faith family, extended family. For there are some in the hospital right now that need a move of God. They need a miracle of God right now in the name of Jesus Christ. So we declare, Darby, you are the healed of the Lord. We speak life into your body. We call you out of that coma in the name of Jesus. We declare that your body is a healthy body. That bones are knit back together again and organs function the way they're supposed to function. and, And everything does right in your body. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus resurrection life in you right now in Jesus holy name we rebuke all manner of infection all manner of septus and MRSA and whatever whatever may be named Lord those names are not above yours your name is above all other names and so we rebuke those things out of his body now and, and everybody else on our prayer list whether they're in a hospital room or a nursing home room or hospice or home or here I declare in agreement with this house that you are the healed of the Lord every wit whole in the name of Jesus Christ for the prayer of faith shall save the sick the Lord shall raise them up so every cell of your body lines up with the will of God right now Oh, every cell of your body Oh, every cell of your body lines up with the will of God right now. For this is the promise of God. He forgives our iniquities. He heals all our diseases. He delivers our life from destruction. And he renews our youth as the eagles. Oh, we bless you for that, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We magnify you, Lord. We magnify you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Health and healing in this house. Health and healing in this house. 
Health and healing in this house. Health and healing in this nation. Health and healing in this land. Health and healing in the earth. Health and healing, health and healing, health and healing. Oh, I thank you for it, Lord. I thank you for it, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that the power of God is present to heal. The power of God is present to heal right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, we thank you for that, Lord. Plead the blood of Jesus over this house, over this ministry, over our loved ones, over our faith family, and over this nation, knowing that the enemy cannot cross the bloodline. We rebuke the powers of hell. We take authority over them now in the name of Jesus Christ. We command them to be removed and return not again. Spirits of division and hatred and violence and murder, that Jezebel spirit, we command you to go in the name of Jesus Christ. Every antichrist spirit, we command you to go in the name of Jesus Christ. We topple your thrones right now in Jesus' name. We command you to be removed. We bind the strong man and cast you away in the name of Jesus Christ. You are not stronger than the words that I speak right now in the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. You must go. You must go. You must go. You must go. You must go in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. I do not divide. Yes. But where there is strife and unrest and there's hate, I have no part in it. Yes. That is of the dark one. Yes. The one of darkness. Mm. But my spirit does not tear down. It reconciles and brings together. I am the judge. Yes. I will judge all things. Yea, even the things that are hidden in darkness. I will bring them to judgment. Yes. I will raise up judges who will bring just judgment in your day. Yes. You will see sitting in every, sorry, in every state just judges. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You know what I hear in my spirit? God is never in dishonor. Never. Doesn't matter what we do right, what we do wrong, God is never in dishonor. And I'm going to tell you, I am believing that what's happening in America will cause a wave of love like we have never seen before. Why? Because He is love. And He has called America to be a, a place, a nation that restores and that brings healing. Hallelujah. Amen. No one is to be put down. Oh, no yes. one. Amen. Amen. So would you say it Amen. with me? We love and we honor. We love and we honor. And we speak peace to America. And we speak peace to America. We speak peace yes, to the world. We speak peace to the world. And we say that we have the eyes of God. Oh, we have the eyes of God. And we have the heart of God. We have the heart of God. Let my life. Let my life. Be a ministry. Be a ministry. To someone who is hurting. To someone who is hurting. And may the love in my heart. May the love in my heart. Be the bridge. Be the bridge. That they can rise up on. That they can rise up in on. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can I pray for Darby? Yes, praise God. I don't know if you know PJ. Uh, you, you can sit down if you're tired. It'll only take a second. But PJ Ewing, her son, has been in the hospital in ICU. It's uh, Paul Taylor's uh, brother, your great nephew, your nephew. And, and so he needs a miracle. And so would you, first let's lift up PJ and Paul to strengthen them. Yeah. He, he was uh, hit. Uh, 
physically by a vehicle. And so he's got uh, broken legs. I mean, he's, he's just had it all. Organs, they need to rise and they need to live. Amen. So from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up Darby to you. I thank you he's blood washed. First and foremost, I thank you that he knows you. He knows your voice in the name of Jesus. We lift up PJ and Charlene and Paul and, and Dwight. We lift up the whole family to you, Lord, and we say strength and hope be into you today. May faith arise into you today in the name of Jesus. Lord, you said with long life you would satisfy us and show us your salvation. God, I just thank you for Darby's life. And Lord, we speak healing in every organ. We say every bone be knit back together. Kidneys, you function the way that God created you to function. And so from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, we say resurrection life come to him today, right now, in the name of Jesus, right now. May angels just surround that room. And Father, we declare that every doctor and every technician knows exactly what to do for him. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen and amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Deborah. Glory to God. Well, turn to your neighbor and smile real big and say, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, just wave to everybody. Just wave. Hello, y'all. Yeah. Amen. I sure do love y'all. Amen. Praise the Lord. You're the prettiest bunch ever. Amen. Yeah, say, so come on, amen. Glory That's to God. us. Well, I welcome you. So good to have you at Grandview Church today. Welcome to those who are joining us online. Welcome. We welcome everybody, and we're just so glad that everybody could be with us. Uh, this is a great day in the Lord. I want to thank Pastor Tom for filling in on Wednesday. Uh, as Debbie, um, yeah, amen. As uh, Debbie mentioned earlier, she was up ministering to family uh, this past week, and, and uh, it was good to have you home, hon. You. Glad you're home. Praise God. Someone say, thank you, Jesus. I mean, you can only eat so many microwave dinners <laughs> before, before that just doesn't work anymore. And so, uh, praise God. On Thursdays, we are starting our one-hour prayer meetings again on Thursdays at noon. We've had them for a couple of weeks now, and they're fantastic, and I encourage you to join us at noon. Our home groups will resume in the fall, so there's no home groups this month. This coming Wednesday night is a night of worship. It's all worship this Wednesday night. It's dedicated to worship. It'll be an hour of power, and I pray that everybody can be with us. And then uh, on June 28th, we'll have a roundtable meeting with the Next Generation Ministry. And then uh, you may have seen it on Facebook, but I want to bring it to your attention if you're not a Facebooker, and if not, get on Facebook for just the church's site, nobody else's site, just the church's <laughs> site. Um, <laughs> But um, our dear Paco has graduated to heaven, and uh, he is now walking on streets of gold. There he is right there, Paco and Mercedes, and he's walking in all of his covenant promises right now. He's healed, he's wealthy, he's healthy, wealthy, strong, and uh, he's blessed of the Lord. And we're having memorial service for him on Saturday, July 18th at 11 o'clock that that date just worked out best for family coming in and whatnot and I hope and pray that y'all can be with us on that Saturday morning at 11 o'clock just mark it in your calendars now and make plans to be with us amen, amen. and amen praise the Lord uh, we are going to uh, do our offering as we have in the last number of weeks uh, I'll encourage you to, if you would uh, feel led to 
to go ahead and make out your check or put your offering in your envelope now, but hold on to it. And then at the end of the service, as you're heading out, you can just drop it in the basket as you go out. Uh, we're not passing things up and down the rows right now while we're observing uh, COVID protocols. And so aren't you going to be glad when all the social distancing is over? Oh, thank you, Jesus. And um, so I will give you a chance to make out those checks and whatnot and then put it in an envelope and put it in the basket on your way out. But let me build your faith for uh, just a second. Paul tells us in Philippians 4 and 19, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Isn't that a great promise? My God shall supply all your need. That's Paul speaking about us. His God, the God, is going to supply all your need according to his riches, not Paul's riches, according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now, the reason that Paul said that was because he was speaking to a people that had entered into a partnership with him. Uh, they were supporting his missionary ministry. And uh, Paul was thanking them for that. And he said, it's not because I desire a gift, but I desire that fruit may abound to your account. So as they were ministering to Paul, fruit was being established in their account in glory. And then Paul says, God's going to make sure that all that you have sown into my ministry, he is going to take care of you. You've taken care of me, Paul says. My father is going to take care of you. But my God shall supply all your need. Has anybody got a need in the house? Amen. Your need is met when you partner with the things of God. And I thank everybody for who has partnered with Grandview Church. I can tell you, you are sowing good seed into good ground. Everybody said amen. Amen. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to sow good seed into good ground. And we declare that this seed will produce souls saved, bodies healed, lives changed. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And we say amen and amen. God bless you in your giving. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. We worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we team wonderful 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 praise the Lord thank you Jesus God is good oh thank you Lord praise the Lord isn't God good all the time praise the Lord so I say bless the Lord Oh, my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. I will bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all that is within me bless his holy name now i want
want you to know God has done great things. Has he done anything great for you? Has he healed your body? Has he saved your soul? Has he delivered you from oppression, depression? Has he lifted burdens and broken yokes? Has he undergirded you with his strong right arm when you were weak? Has he whispered his word into your spirit in the midnight hour? Has he stood on stormy waters with you when you are all alone? Has he been the way-making God? Has he been the promise-keeping God? Has he been the miracle-working God? Oh, yes. Yes, he has. And he's just getting started. Has he given your life purpose and meaning? Oh, I say, he has done great things. He has done great things. Yes, he has. He has done great things. Yes, he has. He has done great things. Bless his holy name. So I will bless the Lord. Oh, yes, I will. Do you have your Bibles with you today? Lift them up and say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I will never, never, never doubt this word because it is the word of God. I've got ears to hear and a heart to receive. So teach to me the word of God. So I believe it. I receive it right now in Jesus' name. I'm talking about the spark of revival, and that is the prophetic utterance. I'm talking about the spark of revival. This is part two in this series. We'll see how long the Lord has us on this. But turn with me to Jeremiah chapter 1, beginning in verse 4. Jeremiah was called the weeping prophet. For he wept over the nation, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4. And the word of the Lord came to me, same. Verse 5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you, separated you, called you unto the ministry, and ordained you a prophet to the nations. Verse 6. Then I said, O Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am but a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am a youth, for you shall go to all to whom I send you. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Verse 9. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. This is an astounding passage. Here we have the calling of God on the prophet to the nation. You know God cares about nations. God has words for nations. We think it's all just to individuals. It's not. It's to nations. And it's especially how nations treat Israel. I'm telling you, church, we better never turn our back on Israel. This is the prophet Jeremiah speaking to the nation of Israel. And God said, I knew you before you were born, before you were formed in the womb. I knew you and I called you when you were in the womb, glory to God. I sanctified you and ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. 
And of course, there's the human response to that. How can that possibly be? I'm too young. I'm too uh, uh, unable to do all that you have called me. But God touched his mouth. This is what the Bible said. The Lord put forth his hand and touched his mouth. When the hand of God touches your mouth, I think we need a little more hand of God on the mouth of man so that the word of God is found in the heart of man. It would turn everything around. It would change nations. It would change the world. If we would just let the hand of God touch the mouth of man, that would change everything. Behold, he says, I have put my words in your mouth. When the Word of God becomes your Word, when the Word of God is found in your mouth, that's when you know you are truly an instrument in the hands of God. Verse 10, see, I have set this day, I have this day set you over the nations and over kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down to build, and to plant. He said, I've made you a prophet unto the nation. See, I have this day set you over nations, over kingdoms. How is that even possible? He wasn't a king. How could he be over a kingdom? He wasn't a president. How could he be over a nation? But now we're seeing the power of prophecy. Now we're seeing the power of the anointing, the power of the calling of God and the life of the man, of the prophet of God. You see, you, you have to understand that when God established mankind, he put him in the garden and he set him to have dominion and authority over the earth. And he would have that dominion and exercise that authority through the spoken word. Man was placed on planet earth to be the mouthpiece of God in the earth and God said, I'm blessed you I give you authority and power over the entirety of the earth and man was supposed to speak God's anointing into the earth and take authority over it but he gave it away man lost his voice I said man lost his voice and the earth has been groaning ever since Jesus came back and restored the kingdom someone say praise the Lord and he restored our authority in him glory to God so when God says I give you I've set you over nations that's because we have the word of God to speak over a nation we can speak in authority over the nation and devils have to flee glory to God we can speak in authority authority over a nation and see things come into order and come in back into balance. Someone say praise the Lord. I don't have to be elected to office. I just have to get in my prayer closet. Come on church. Hallelujah. We, we, don't, we don't have to run. I'm glad some are and I'm, sat, I'm glad some will stand in office and, and will be a light shining for the things of God. But the people of God need to get into the prayer closet once again and exercise the authority because God wants to set you this day over nations and over kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build up and to plant. This is the picture of revival right here. Prophecy is the root of revival because prophecy roots out and pulls down and destroys and throws down, but it also plants and builds up. There's stuff that needs to be torn down. There's stuff that needs to be rooted out. There's stuff that needs to be destroyed. There's stuff that needs to be thrown down. Disease needs to be thrown down. Violence needs to be thrown down. Racism needs to be thrown down. Division needs to be thrown down. Poverty needs to be thrown down. Anarchy needs to be thrown down. Terrorism needs to be thrown down. Destroy, rooted out so that God's way can be planted and built up in this land. Amen. Someone say, praise the, Lord. praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Prophecy is the spark of, the re of revival. The prophet cries God's word over the nation. A prophet is someone who can see the spiritual condition of a nation and he's so burdened by it or she's so burdened by it 
that he calls, come back to the Lord. Come back to the Lord. That's the spark of revival right there. we, we got to tear some things down, but we can build things up. We, we got to destroy things, but we got, we got to plant the right thing. We got to plant some things and water it and, and care for it and watch it grow up and flourish and, and bloom in the land of God. Once come, come back, come back to the things of God. We, we've gotten away from the things of God. It's for the individual, it's for the family, it's for the church, it's for the neighborhood, it's for the region, it's for the state, it's for the nation. I said it's for the nation. And the prophet stands up and receives the anointing of God to speak. God touches his mouth. I just put my words in your mouth, says the Lord. Prophecy is speaking by the inspiration of God. It is foretelling the future, but it is also foretelling. Is telling the word of God under the anointing of the Lord. Is speaking by the anointing of the Lord. And, and prophecy is a, it's a tremendous weight. It's a tremendous calling to say something isn't right. This has got to change. It grieves God's heart. Come back. Revival. Now, the book you hold in your hand is the Word of God. It's the Bible. It is the Word of Prophecy. It's called the sure word of prophecy in Scripture. And we know it's the Word of Prophecy because in 2 Timothy 3 and 16, we're told that a Scripture is given by inspiration of God. It is uh, holy men of old wrote as the Holy Spirit gave them the leading and the guiding to do so. So that book you hold in your hand is a, is a book of prophecy. It tells history and past, it tells history in the future, foretells history, book of Revelation and so forth, foretells future. So it is a book of prophecy. And as a book of prophecy, it is a uh, revelation. It takes the temperature, it takes the pulse, it takes the, um, the awareness of how the nation is doing. Have you ever gone into the doctor's office? And uh, what's the first thing they do? They take your vital signs. They'll put a cuff on you, take your blood pressure, put a, put a thermometer in you, and uh, take your temperature. Put, your, put you on a scale, and you say, that thing's lying. That thing, <laughs> your scale is broken. Glory to God. That thing ain't working right. Glory to God. That, that's a devil's lie right there. That's right. Amen. Praise God. But, uh, but they're checking for vital signs to see how you're doing, to make sure everything's okay. Want to make sure that you're still alive and kicking. And so before the doctor ever sees you, they take your vital signs. Well, the Bible, as a book of prophecy, is checking the vital signs of the nation all the time. And so we as people of God should be able to look in the Word of God and see, do, does this Word tell us that the nation is a healthy nation? Does this Word tell us the nation is troubled, something is wrong? And I saw in one of the Bibles that I own an article by a Dr. Richard Lee, and he lists the seven principles of the Judeo-Christian ethic. Seven Principles of the Judeo-Christian Ethic. And it, it, as a nation, as we embrace, we are founded on the Judeo-Christian ethic, as a nation, we should look at these things and say, how are we doing here? Uh, are we lining up with these things? And I want to just run through them very quickly with you. Principle number one of the seven principles of the Judeo-Christian ethic. Here's principle number one. The dignity of life. Dignity of life. If we are to be a, a Christian nation, there should be an understanding that every life has dignity, every life has value, every life is worthy in the eyes of God from the womb to the tomb as it has been said. Look with me in Jeremiah 1 and 5, before I formed you in the womb I knew you, before you were born I sanctified you from the womb to the tomb. There is value in the eyes of God for 
for all life. The Bible says it repeatedly at least four times. God is no respecter of persons. God values all persons. Come on. We're all created in the image of God. I said everybody is created in the image of God. Uh, not, now not everybody is born of God. You've got to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. But everybody is created in the image of God. You look like God. I look like God. We all look like God. And this whole lie, this devil's lie, this, devil, this devil's disease of racism is to get one group of people to hate the image of God in another group of people and get another group of people to hate the image of God in another group of people and the devil just sits back and laughs because all we're doing is hating what God looks like the devil hates the image of God the devil hates you because you look like the image of God and if he can get us to hate one another just because that we look like God then the devil just sits back and laughs we can't take the bait I said we can't take the bait Racism is just an attack on the image of God. Because of the amount of pigment in our skin, it's ridiculous. It's devilish. It's ungodly. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. So principle number one is there is dignity to human life. From the womb to the tomb, and prayerfully eternal life with Jesus Christ. Principle number two, the traditional family has been under tremendous attack in this nation. But the Bible says the traditional family is part of the Judeo-Christian ethic that we built this nation upon. In fact, it has been since, the, since Adam and Eve in the garden until recently in this nation... The traditional family. And there needs to be a restoration of the traditional family in this nation. I know many people want to define it many different ways. Uh, uh, the modern family and this that definition. But I say let's just stick with the word. Because there's nothing better than a husband and a wife raising their children in the reverence and admonition of the Lord and, and having a godly heritage down through the generations. Um, someone say, praise the, Lord. praise the Lord. And let me just speak to the generations. Generations, if you're living, listening to me by, by internet or here in this room, uh, let me just say, uh, girls, if he's not going to put a ring on it, walk away. Come on. Amen. Amen. We need to get back to it. And, and I know there's all different situations and circumstances that happens. And God can work his best in any situation and circumstance. God can turn it all around for good. I know that to be true. But if we're talking about what is the, the Judeo-Christian ethic in this nation... It is the traditional family unit of a husband and wife raising their children. Oh, come on now. Amen. Number three, a national work ethic. This nation is built upon a strong work ethic. The Bible says if you don't work, you don't eat. Well, le let me tell you, there's, there's times when everybody needs to, a helping hand for everybody else. We've just, we're in the middle of that right now as a nation. We understand that. But work is what gives us meaning and purpose. Achieving something is what makes you feel good on the inside. That I accomplished something today. That getting out of bed was worthwhile. That I gave it my best shot and, and I tried my best and I was rewarded for it. And I'm going to try harder tomorrow. Come on, somebody. Number four, a right to a God-centered education. You say, Pastor, you stuck that in there because you were the, the uh, principal of a Christian academy for 14 years. Well, I was a principal of a Christian academy for 14 years because I believe in this Judeo-Christian ethic principle. That Christian parents should have the ability to put their child in a school that agrees with their morals and values. 
I believe that your tax dollars should follow your child into the school of your choice. I don't think you should send your child to a school that is going to unteach your child the very principles that you are teaching in your home. I believe that you are mom and dad and God has ordained you to raise that child. They're not to be raised by the state and the state should not be unteaching the very principles that you are teaching to your child. I believe in school choice. I believe in school choice from preschool on up through the university. I am troubled by what, I, by what I'm seeing in our universities today. And I think that parents, Christian parents, should be able to send their children to the school of their choice that is going to establish and agree with what you as parents are teaching around your dinner table. Amen. Number five, the Abrahamic covenant, which means Israel is the homeland to the Jews. The Abraham covenant that says that the promised seed is coming through the lineage of Abraham and David. The Abrahamic covenant that says we are blessed to be a blessing. But principally, the Abrahamic covenant that God spoke to Abraham and said, I am giving you this land. The land of Israel belongs to the Jews and the people of God need to stand in agreement with that and I am so glad that the current administration said that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel and moved our embassy into Jerusalem. Principle number six, common decency. Common decency. Decency is not so common anymore, but common decency. Doing the right thing, treating people the right way, respecting the law. Come on. Principle number seven, our personal accountability to God. Each and every one of us will stand before the Lord on our own one day. We will give an account of how we have lived our life. If you are a born-again believer, you will stand before the Lord. You will not be judged for your sins. Jesus has already been judged for your sins. But you will be judged as to how faithful you were to the Word of God because it is at the Bema Seat of Christ that God is going to hand out His assignments. He's going to hand out his rewards. You're going to find out whether you're going to have authority over one city, ten cities, or more cities. You're going to find out what your eternal assignment is going to be. So yes, you will be judged according to how faithful you were with God's assignment in your life. And the church said, Amen. We are all personally accountable to God. Now, I am concerned that as a nation, we are rejecting all of these tenets. I am concerned as a nation that we are rejecting one through seven in regards to these tenets. If the Bible is a meter as to the, the vital signs of a nation, I would say we're in trouble as a nation right now. <laughs> Come on, church. Oh, I wish I could just preach a message on the golden rule today and Peter walked on water. But that's not where we're at right now as a nation. And God has raised me up today to take the temperature of a nation. And God says, don't be afraid of their faces. I'm with you. Come on, church. So I'm concerned. I'm concerned. That as a nation, we're rejecting the tenets of our faith, of the Judeo-Christian ethic that this nation is founded on. The politically correct movement is dominating our media and dominating our colleges and dominating our politics. And it's not just politically correct anymore. Now it's the cancel culture that if you say the wrong thing and almost think the wrong thing, you'll be canceled in our society. You'll lose your job. You'll be run out of town. Let me tell you, I believe that the First Amendment is at risk in this nation. 
I said, I believe the first. I heard a prominent, a prominent, a prominent politician on television just the other day saying, you cannot say that. The First Amendment right does not cover you saying whatever was being said. And I thought, wait a second. I can say anything in this nation, right or wrong. I can say anything in this nation. I have freedom to say anything in this nation. People can say any stupid thing that they want to say. They can say any moronic thing that they want to say. They can say any. It, it may condemn them in the throne room of heaven. Jesus said we're going to be judged for every idle word that we speak. But in this nation, according to my First Amendment rights, I can say anything that I desire and I have a constitution that says I can say it. I have a First Amendment that says I can worship the way I want to worship. I have a First Amendment that says I can gather with whoever I want to gather with. Come on, come on, come on. And it cannot abridge my freedom of speech. Hallelujah. But it's in danger right now. (laughs) Where was my sermon of Peter walking on the water? Hey, I'll find it. I'm going to find that sermon. He walked on the water, you know. It came out really good. He walked on the water. Amen. Oh, yeah. Do a good turn daily. That's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one on do a good turn daily. Golden rule, treat other people the way you want to be treated. That's a good one. Now, I say this today because I have to ask the question, Can nations split? Can nations fall? The prophet was speaking to a nation that had split ten tribes to the north, two tribes to the south. They split after the golden age of Solomon. You see, when you're in the golden age, you think this is forever. What could possibly happen? This will never change. Golden age. Solomon is the wisest man. Our temple is the most beautiful temple. The walls of Jerusalem are the tallest walls. The city of David is Zion. God dwells here. Oh, yes, this will never fall. And yet, it was a nation divided because the people came into a disagreement and they couldn't settle it. So ten tribes went off to the north. That was called Israel. Two tribes stayed in the south with Jerusalem. They were called Judah. Israel and Judah. Israel and Judah. Can nations split? God's nation did. Can nations fall? God's nation did. We went from the golden age of of Solomon to a dust heap when foreign nations were done with them because of their rebellious ways. The northern ten tribes were conquered by the Assyrians in 720 before Christ, 720 years before Christ. Conquered by the Assyrians, never to be heard of again, gone. And then the southern two tribes, Judah, Benjamin, called Judah, they were conquered by the Babylonians. The Babylonians defeated them in 605, started a series of deportations. Can a nation split? God's did. Can a nation fall? God's did. But here's the funny thing. Every nation thinks it never will. God's nation thought it would never fall. It had the Ark of the Covenant. It had God's name upon the Upon the door and the lintel, it'll never fall. But it did. Babylon thought that it would never fall, but it did to the Persians. The Persians thought that they would never fall, but they did to the Greeks. The Greeks thought that they would never fall, but they did to the Romans. The Romans thought that they would never fall, but they did to the Germanic barbarians. Every nation thinks that it can't, but it can. And if we think... 
that we will never, ever fall, that God will just continue to wink at our foolishness, that we can drift farther and farther and farther and farther away from the will of God, the word of God, the covenant of God, and put ourselves at risk. Don't you know that there are enemy at the door waiting to get in and bring this whole thing down? Before every tragic moment in the history of Israel, God raised up a prophet. The prophet is the spark of revival. God raised up Elijah. 1 Kings in 18 and 17, Elijah said to King Ahab, King Ahab was the worst of all the kings, married Jezebel. King Ahab, he said, King Ahab, I want you to summon 1 Kings 18 and 17. I think you're probably right, but I'm wrong. So just listen to me. 19, 19, sorry. That was my mistake. 1 Kings 18 and 19. I have a misprint. Now summon all Israel to join me at Mount Carmel. Thank you. Along with the 450 prophets of Baal. Jezebel brought all those prophets with her. She was the daughter. The king where she came from. She was the king's daughter. But he was also the prophet of Baal. And she brought all that nonsense with her. When Ahab married her. Bring with the 450 prophets of Baal, the 400 prophets of the Asherah, which are supported by Jezebel. So Ahab summoned all the people of Israel and all the prophets to Mount Carmel. We know how the story goes. Verse 21. And, Ahab, and Elijah stood in front of them. Now he's speaking to the nation. Everybody's there. Everybody's there. He stood in front of them and said, How much longer will you waver hobbling between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, then follow him. But the people were completely silent. How long will you waver? How long, that word hobbling means how long will you dance between the two? Hop from one, hop to the other, hop from one, hop to the other. I feel that America is hobbling, is wavering between two opinions. I feel that we are wavering between socialism and democracy. I feel that we are wavering between politically correct and biblically correct. I feel that we're wavering between one nation under God and one nation without God. I feel that we're wavering between pro-choice and pro-life. I feel that we're a nation that is wavering and the people were completely silent. Elijah said to Ahab, he says, the children of Israel have forsaken their covenant, torn down their altars, killed their prophets with the sword. When you tear down the covenant, tear down the altar, silence the prophets, you are in trouble. When you walk away from the covenant of God, when you tear down the meeting place with God, when you kill the voice of God, you are a nation in trouble. And Elijah told Ahab, we are a nation in trouble because we've lost our covenant, we've lost our altars, we've lost our voice, and this is our opportunity. Revival has got to come to the nation. This is what the prophet told the king. This is a prophet talking to the king. He said, we have got to have revival in the nation. And you know the big showdown. You know the big showdown where the, the fire came down on Elijah's altar, did not come down on Baal's offer, uh, altar. He slew all the prophets of Baal. Then the rain came again. Baal was the god of rain. Uh, Elijah said, there'll be no rain. I'm going to silence that god. There was no rain for three years. But after the showdown on Mount Carmel, after the fire fell on the altar and God proved that he was the God of Elijah. This was the opportunity for a nation to say we're with Elijah. This was the opportunity for a nation to say Baal is nothing. He's no more than a carved stick, a wooden representation. He is nothing. We're with Elijah. We're with the Lord God Almighty. It's time to get our covenant back. It's time to get our altars back. It's time to listen to the voice of God, the prophet. It's time to re have revival in the nation. And the the rain came back. 
Elijah said, let the rain come back. Send his prophet. See, is there a cloud? Is there a cloud? Yes, yes, yes. Is there a cloud? Then the rain. And he said to, he said to his servant, you go tell Ahab. He better get in his chariot. He better ride like crazy. The rain is coming. The rain is coming. Meaning revival is coming. Revival is coming. And, and Elijah thought there was going to be revival in the land. How could there not be revival in the land? There was fire on the altar. There was rain coming down by the buckets. He slew the prophets of Baal. How could revival not come to the land? Elijah thought, this is it, man. The nation is going to get turned around. But Jezebel. Jezebel. Jezebel spirit. That Jezebel spirit. That Jezebel spirit is the power behind the throne. It's that evil, wicked, deep state, backstabbing Judas, Antichrist, devilish spirit that is going to resist everything of God. Jezebel said there will be no revival. In fact, she said in 1 Kings in 19, So let the gods do to me and more. What gods? He already proved you have no gods. <laughs> he already slew all of your priests. What gods? If I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow this time. And that was the end of revival right there. There should have been. should have been revival. How, how could there not be? Fire on the altar? I'm talking about divine fire on the altar. I'm talking about rain that had been divinely held up for three years. is now flowing like buckets. How could there not be a revival? Jezebel. Jezebel. There are two necessary elements of revival. Prophecy from the pulpit and agreement of the people. Elijah stood up and he prophesied that there were wavering between two things, he said, but the people were silent. I'm a pastor. My assignment as a pastor is to lead, to feed, to protect the flock. That's what pastors do. We lead, we feed, we protect. That's what we do. But... There is a prophetic anointing that comes with that commission. Because a pastor also looks at what is the condition of the church in the earth today. What is the condition of my church? What is the condition of the church in America? What is the condition of the church? And, and so it is my prayer that the prophetic anointing of Prophecy comes upon the men of God, the women of God in the pulpits throughout our land. Paul said, pray for me in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18. Pray for me, praying with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, watching whereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. He said, pray for me that all utterance may be given unto me, that prophecy, that all utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly and make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bonds. He was in prison at the time. And herein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. I'm praying that the spirit of prophecy comes upon men and women throughout the land and not just from the pulpit. I'm talking about every born-again, blood-bought, spirit-filled, Bible-believing, devil-chasing, water-walking, dead man-raising, Holy Ghost, believer in Jesus Christ. I'm praying that the spirit of prophecy come upon the people of God and we begin to rise up and say, our nation is not not a healthy nation. We are not on the right track. We need to check for vital signs once again. We need to do what we need to do to get life back into this nation because we're wandering away from the things of God. We've let 
Ungodly people determine the nature and the direction of our nation, and we've got to get it back. The people cannot be completely silent any longer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then if they turn from their wicked ways, if they repent of their sins, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. That's what revival is. It's healing. It's healing. It's healing. What does revival look, down, look like? Remember, it's a tearing down, but it's also a building up. Oh, there has, there's things that have to be torn down. There's things that have to be done away with. But then there has to be the planting, and there has to be the building up. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 8, don't be afraid of their faces. For I'm with you to deliver you, says the Lord. And he put forth his hand, and he touched his mouth and said my words are now in your mouth may the hand of God touch your mouth I have put my words in your mouth see I have set you over how many of y'all are speaking over the nation. How many of y'all are speaking over the nation? I, I'm not talking about whining and complaining and, oh, have you seen the latest headline? Have you seen this? Have you seen that? Have you re read the latest poll? Have you? No, I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about spiritual things now. I'm talking about spiritual things now. <laughs> I have sent you over the nations and over kingdoms to do what? To root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. How many of your prayers are rooting out? How many of your prayers are casting down? How many of your prayers are destroying? How many of your prayers are throwing down the workings of the enemy so that we can plant and build up once again? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 2015, Brother Copeland said, the tent meeting revival anointing has returned. I didn't hear that till recently. I did not know he had said that, but I agree with it. The tent meeting revival. And, and I'm not talking about just the, the superficial stuff of the sing-along. I'm, I'm talking about... What led to a true move of God in this nation. You see, in that day, there was no mega churches. There was no, there was no arena big enough to hold them like we have today. So the anointed prophet, the man of God, the healing evangelist would come to town. And, and so many people would come that they would have to set up a big old tent. But, but this is it. This is the secret of it. This is the meaning of it. In the tent revival... You had people from every denominational background come. Why? Because it was the biggest thing happening in the county. It was the biggest thing happening anywhere. And everybody from everywhere came. And, and what were they hearing? They were usually hearing a Pentecostal preacher that believes in the healing power of God, uh, minister the Word of God. And so a whole lot of Christians from a whole lot of different backgrounds were hearing for the first time that God saves by grace. God wants to heal your body. God wants to do good in your life. That this was the first time folks were hearing this because they had been boxed up in their ecclesiastical, ecclesiastical understanding of God of whatever their pastor or their preach or their parish was telling them at that time. But it was the tent meeting revival that got them out of that box and got them in together. Well, people of every denominational background broke down all sorts of walls, all sorts of divisions, all sorts of separation, and everybody was coming together and worshiping God with one voice and one and watching 
the healing miracles of God be manifest right before their eyes. This is why revival is usually in the healing atmosphere. In a healing atmosphere. Revival restores health to the nation. Revival restores health to the body. We think so very often revival is an evangelistic meeting. The health of a, health of a spirit is the saving of a soul. The health of the body is a physical healing. And so we, we look at revival in terms of a healing anointing, a, a healing atmosphere. And, and it is. That, that's what revival is. It, it's, it's a healing uh, experience. Spiritually speaking, it's the healing by salvation. Physically speaking, it's the he healing by miracles. Society speaking. Everybody in one place worshiping together with one voice. The tent meeting revival has returned. I'm looking for revival in America. I believe the church of Jesus Christ needs to stand up and look for revival in America. I want, I want you to know that there are pastors throughout the land and in every church throughout the land today wrestling with what do I say and how do I say it. I, I, if I could offer any bit of admonition, encouragement to any of my brothers and sisters in the ministry throughout the land is uh, look at this passage that we looked at today and take God at his word that says, do not look at the faces of the folks, <laughs> but simply speak what I put in your mouth. And as the prophetic anointing comes upon you, my brothers and sisters in the Lord, and you, my brothers and, and sisters, as the prophetic anointing comes on you, then you stand up. And you speak the word of God that this is not right in the land. And we have got to get back to our foundational roots in Jesus Christ as a nation. Did you get anything out of this today? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, bless the Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, God is good. And this is the way I'm going to uh, close this service. And yes, one day I will preach Jesus and Peter walked on water. <laughs> That's coming. Amen. Um, but this is what I'm going to release into you today. Is the prophetic anointing. That, um, that we as a people need to call the nation back to its foundations. Amen. And the dignity of human life, the traditional family, the national work ethic, a right to a God-centered education, the Abrahamic covenant, common decency, and a personal accountability to God. There is... Um, hurt in our nation and wound in our nation and division in our nation and that is not of God that is not of God it's devilish and it is um, plan of the enemy and uh, when you when you think about it and trace it back um, our heritage is exactly the same Adam and Eve we talk about uh, white race, black race, this race, that race. It's the human race because we all come from the same parentage. We all, every single one of us are brothers and sisters. We talk about being brothers and sisters in the Lord, and that is, that is true. But before we were ever in the Lord, we were brothers and sisters just naturally. We, we come from the same parentage, Adam and Eve. And there was only two, and, and all of us came from them. All of us. And so that the, the enemy would try to divide us. That's devilish. And that's not of God. And, uh, and it's the prophetic anointing that will spark revival again in our nation. Will you stand with me? Amen. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Oh, we bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Oh, Rihanna Maria Lama. Ia Lama Boko Rihanna Ma. Oh, Rihanna Ma Siri Lama Si. Oh, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Oh, Rihanna Maria Lama. Now, Father, I have prayed and preached and taught today that the spark of revival is the prophetic utterance that with revival, healing comes. It's the nature of revival, healing to the nation. I will heal your land. That's what the Lord said. And we do pray for healing in this land, Lord. There, there's much wounds and much hurt over many, many generations. But a divine move of God. That's what we're looking for, a divine healing, a true Holy Ghost move of God to bring healing to this land in Jesus' holy name. We're, we're all instruments of your healing, Lord. Every one of us who has a prophetic anointing, and we all do in Christ, we're all instruments of your healing in this land. Use us. Use us, Father God. Use us, Lord, to pray over this nation, to tear down the junk, to build up that which is godly, to tear down the division, to bring healing to wounded hearts and wounded lives. Oh, we pray for this today, Lord. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' holy name we pray. Hallelujah. 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 Now, I know because of social distancing, we, we can't come down to the altar and, and stand together. But would you just lift your hand? If you want to be an agent of God's healing in the earth today, just lift your hands and let's just invite the anointing of God. We're just going to worship in the Spirit for a moment. We're just going to invite God's healing anointing to come upon us. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Oh, Rihanna Maria Lama Boko, Rihanna Ma. Ia la Maria Lama Boko, Rihanna Ma. Ia la Maria Lama Boko, Rihanna Ma. Ia la Maria la Maria Lama Boko, Rihanna Ma. Ia la Maria Boko, Rihanna Ma. Ia la Maria Maria Lama. Oh, Rihanna, ma sidi alama, sidi alama, sidi alama. Oh, Rada, ma boko, Rihanna, ma. I alama, ni alama boko, Rihanna, ma. I alama, ni alama boko, Rihanna, ma. Use us, Lord, as your instruments of healing in this land. In Jesus' holy name, we pray, we believe you, Lord, for revival, godly, Holy Ghost, healing revival in the United States of America. In Jesus' name we pray, and the church said, Amen. I speak over you saying, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you all. We'll see you Wednesday night for a night of worship. God bless.